Labdien. Hello. Um, this is Mo Ervins Labanovskis. My name is Ervins Labanovskis. I'm the head of the Freedom and Solidarity Foundation. And I'm very happy to moderate this discussion today on uh, social and affordable housing. This discussion is, is like the final stage uh, for a full year of work at the level of the EU. Researchers have uh, collected the different examples of housing policy so as to show how to um, make housing more affordable. By uniting seven, several foundations, I'm going to name them right now, the Spanish Pablo Iglesias Foundation, EU Progressive Studies Foundation, Friedrich Ebert Foundation, the Latvian Freedom and Solidarity Foundation, and the Tarikova Democratica Academia. All these foundations took part with their knowledge, their resources, and this research in order to collect those interesting best practices uh, by municipalities and states in order to solve different problems related to housing. Even though the EU has uh, different member states, we still see similar problems rising. Namely, the price of housing, inaccessibility, maybe even a lack of um, of land to, for, for building this property, costs for um, amenities, and so on. In Latvia and also in Spain, you can find very similar challenges. For instance, both Latvia and Spain are countries where most of the population live in apartments, namely approximately 70%. So there are some things that we can learn from each other. Today, our conversation is going to be in a two channels, the text channel and also on the Facebook page of uh, the head of the Freedom and Solidarity Foundation. So you can uh, listen to both the channels. You can uh, ask your questions. You can put your questions under the comments. We are going to try to read them during the discussion. And later on, it will be published on the web pages in all those foundations. And uh, the video will also have a link. Let us begin. And now I would like to give the floor to one of the leading authors of this publication. And Nuria uh, Lambert. So please, the two speakers, uh, you can introduce yourselves and then start your presentation. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you, Ervins, for this introduction. And also thank you to Liga for inviting us here today. Uh, Professor Nassar and I, as you said, will be presenting the results of the report Concrete Actions for Social and Affordable Housing in the EU which we have co-authored together with Milan Vtachnik and Liga Rajnaka. It is nice to, to see you both also here today. Um, the three main aspects that um, have guided this research, I don't know if you can, if you can see the, the, the slides. I'll continue then. The, the three main aspects, as I said, if we go to the, to the second slide, um, that have guided the research are um, housing affordability, housing sustainability, and inclusiveness. Um, therefore, the first thing that we had to do was to delimit their concepts, which are sometimes unclear or not easy to define. Other concepts addressed also were like social housing, housing deprivation, uh, homelessness, and so on. The country selection followed the criteria of their dimension, bigger and smaller ones, and um, as well as a geographic location. So we have the Netherlands and the United Kingdom, England in particular, and Austria, representing Nordic Western Europe countries. Then we have Spain representing Mediterranean countries and Slovakia, Latvia, and other Baltic countries for Eastern Europe. Um, in order to choose and highlight the best practices, we used objective criteria that you can see in this slide. Uh, we used aspects such as the budget, the scope, the beneficiaries, the real impact, and the results, among other uh, criteria. 
The same with the lessons learned, pointing out strengths and weaknesses and the replicability of the measures and policies. So all in all, we, we undertook what is known as a bottom-up approach, extracting uh, lessons and recommendations for the EU countries from the best practices and lessons learned in the countries that we, that we reviewed. In the following two slides, uh, we have gathered all the best practices and lessons learned that we selected for each country. I won't go into in detail with them because uh, Professor Nasari will explain some of them, and I'm pretty sure that also you will be discussing some of them after, after our presentation. Um, so after this slide, the, the next table, which you also can find in the study in pages 100, 120 to 127, summarizes all, all the common features and challenges of the housing sectors studied and classify them into six different areas. We have governance, we have urbanization and affordability, we have social rental housing, migrants and Roma, housing deprivation and homelessness. Uh, and there were three topics that were the most commonly addressed by national reporters, some of them already highlighted for uh, Erbin. The first one would be the impact of the process of urbanization on housing and affordability, the lack of territorial cohesion, geographical land restrictions, the gentrification of cities, and touristification. So in that sense, housing and affordability was highlighted in all studied countries. Then the second big field uh, that I think it's in the slide before um, that was addressed by nearly all studied countries is social rental housing in two different approaches. The first one would be the size of its share, if it's too big or if it's too small, both. And secondly, its management, the management of this, of this stock. And finally, the third big challenge is housing deprivation in terms of lack of adequacy of housing in different fields. We have the need for renovation of the stock, improvement of energy efficiency and universally accessible housing and independent living, and mainly for, for disabled and for aging people. Of course, other challenges were mentioned, but to a lesser extent, we can, we can mention the housing governance in terms of lack of coherence in housing policies and insufficient data and research in relating to housing. We can mention immigration, refugees and Roma people, housing security, and also, last but not least, uh, we can also mention, or it was also highlighted, uh, homelessness and its different forms, roofless people, hiding hidden homelessness or squatting, among others. So it's, homelessness actually is a, is a problem that is on its rise in nearly every, every European country. I have no doubt that some or most of them will be raised in this conference today. Uh, so I just gave you a broad picture. And now I'm giving the floor to Professor Nasarri, who will elaborate further on these challenges and uh, as well as the lessons learned. Okay, so thank you very much, uh, Nuria, for this uh, presentation. Uh, thank you very much also to Professor Liga Rasnaka and her team, uh, and also to BSF for uh, your kind invitation to this conference. Uh, happy to speak from Spain, and I'm happy to uh, explain a bit some of the common challenges and best practices to prevent, tackle, and react to uh, those uh, housing challenges, modern housing challenges today in uh, this selection of countries. First thing, as, as Nuria was mentioning before, uh, first challenge is uh, ur urbanization. The process of urbanization has had an impact in housing and affordability, the lack of territorial cohesion, which means this difference between the rural areas and the urban areas. We have uh, geographical land restrictions, cities in gentrification and touristification. These are the issues that have been risen in this study. And uh, in relation to affordability, um, several countries have mentioned that uh, some, some policies might, might help uh, in, in this sense, like for example, in Spain, in the United Kingdom, in the Netherlands, uh, they, they, they have mentioned, the reporters have mentioned that there is a need for the creation of different functional types of housing tenures uh, and to improve the uh, current ones, uh, the, their legal framework, how, how, how they behave, for example, tenancies. Austria and the Netherlands have mentioned rent control uh, for public housing 
and the use of a so sort of point system for uh, establishing the, 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 the price of the, of, of the rents in tenancies, for example, in the Netherlands. And also these two countries, uh, the Netherlands and the United Kingdom, uh, have mentioned that the, the, the importance of the creation or the, or the boosting of mixed the creation of mixed communities. This is usually known as a mixité, and this uh, helps to avoid stigmatization and ghetto ghettoization in our cities. Uh, there are several uh, public policies uh, also mentioned in the, in the report that uh, from less to more intrusive into the market, that have been uh, addressed. Uh, for example, the creation of public-private partnerships, the housing associations mentioned in the United Kingdom, uh, but, but also in Austria, um, with, uh, through the supply uh, of, uh, uh, sorry, so through the financing of the supply side uh, of subsidized housing. Also in, in Slovakia, uh, as a good practice, have mentioned this uh, state housing development fund that uh, grants uh, soft long term loans um, for, uh, for, uh, for rented housing. This scheme in Austria uh, has been also high, highlighted, uh, in, in particular in Vienna. This is the smart flats scheme uh, that um, helps to create a higher share of, of uh, public subsidies um, per square meter in exchange of smaller dwellings uh, in that city. And finally, in Latvia, uh, precisely uh, this uh, housing warranty program uh, have mentioned for families to become homeowners uh, with a subsidy of 30% uh, for mortgages. In relation to territorial cohesion and planning, there are several schemes uh, due to time constraints. I will not mention all of them, but basically they deal with uh, this uh, trying to, uh, to, to uh, reach sort of harmonization uh, between the, the, the progressive emptying of rural areas and people concentrating in urban areas. Uh, some of the key aspects are related in the United Kingdom, for example, or in Austria, to uh, the obligation for the uh, urban planner to, um, to book, to, to reserve, to prevent uh, uh, an area for social housing, uh, compulsory, yes? And, uh, and this has been quite successful in those countries, also in Spain. In relation to social rental housing, this challenge uh, has had two, uh, two approaches, uh, the size of its share, uh, so the need to increase its share in several countries and the mismanagement or misuse when this stock is, is big enough. In relation to its share, uh, Spain and Austria uh, have mentioned that this uh, housing association institution, which are sort of uh, public-private uh, collaboration uh, entities, are very helpful to increase this share of affordable housing. In Slovakia, they have approached to this issue through this municipal rental uh, dwellings scheme in, the, in this particular city of Neve, Nove Mesto, Nat Bahom, that is uh, particularly uh, uh, described in the, in, the, in the report, if you're interested in how, how they manage this there. And uh, in relation to the mismanagement of the, or misuse of, a, of the housing stock, or the social housing stock, um, several countries that, uh, that have reported that they have problems with skewness or long waiting lists. Skewness means basically that uh, people enter in these uh, facilities, in this social housing, but their situation is not revised for years or decades, and they, they are there, they, 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 are, uh, they are occupying these this, this, uh, properties and they block the access to uh, new uh, people in need. So these uh, waiting lists are created because of this lack of uh, proper management. Housing dep deprivation has been also a very uh, important issue raised in, in nearly all the countries reported in the, in the study. And uh, several, uh, in, in, different fields, in different fields, like universal accessibility to housing in an aging society and for the disabled people, and also for uh, the need for reno renovation of the housing stock and uh, in relation to especially, specifically in relation to energy efficiency issues. Some schemes are mentioned there, like for example, energy, energy sprung in the Netherlands or uh, in Slovakia, this state housing development fund quite successful as well. Also in Austria and also in Latvia, uh, through the, this uh, uh, group home um, scheme uh, that has helped to the renovation of large housing stocks for the disabled and for the disadvantaged people. 
This is the last slide and basically summarizes up what are, what are the lessons learned. It's like an octopus and it shows here seven points, seven strong points that might, might, might be of help to other countries or other cities. First thing is the need to achieve a functional mix of housing tenures um, through an informal harmonization with EU, uh, within the EU, sorry, to achieve true alternative to home ownership. Home ownership does not need to be the paramount type of tenure, and it should be combined with other uh, interesting uh, okay. housing tenures, like uh, functional tenancies or the creation of new intermediate tenures, housing tenures like the shared ownership, the temporal ownership, the community land trusts, or the functional housing or, or the creation of functional housing cooperatives schemes. Second lesson is that um, the widespread of housing associations like institutions to boost collaboration between public uh, and private initiatives have been quite successful. In many countries, Austria, the Netherlands, the United Kingdom are examples of this, and we are starting uh, some experiments also quite successful in Spain. So this is quite ad advisable to other countries to start this collaboration between public and private, and private uh, entities. Um, for example, you can use the know-how of these entities to go on and to increase this uh, housing stock, this affordable housing stock, and you use the policies uh, to control what, uh, do, what, what these kind of institutions do with their housing stock. Third thing is that the urbanization has led to population concentration, uh, suitable land scarcity, housing affordability, housing deterioration and displacement of the less affluent. Big interventions of public back funds, public back funds in, in Slovakia, for example, and in Vienna, and a proper policy of territorial cohesion are needed. Um, also, uh, people uh, without home, the homeless, the, the, the homeless people and people uh, uh, excluded uh, in the field of housing should be also bear in mind. Fourth uh, lesson learned is the warranty of universal accessibility to housing for the elderly and the disabled. And also uh, housing instead of repair and energy efficiency are essential. Some keys are also explained during the report. Fifth thing, fifth, the fifth idea, the fifth lesson learned is that uh, patching the laws in coherent or contradictory multi-level housing legislation does not work. Sixth, sixth lesson is that trustworthy and independent housing research can help to properly orientate housing policies. And finally, there is the need for increased literacy in the field of housing among citizens. Sometimes we find that citizens don't know their rights, they don't know what to do, they find themselves uh, evicted or homeless, and, and, they, and, and, and they don't have enough tools, they don't have enough, en enough resources to react. So the transfer and communication of trustworthy housing research to groups of interest is absolutely crucial. And then, uh, thank you very much for your attention. And then Milan now uh, will uh, explain us uh, some of the specific actions that we have recommended uh, at local level, at national level, and, and at the uh, European level. Once again, thank you very much. Thank you very much. I understand that this is really a challenge to do this kind of work in 15 minutes to do this summary for such a great work. But in any case, I would like to give the floor to the next speaker, who is also a practitioner, not only good at theory. So this is Milan Dachnik, who, who is also the former mayor of Bratislava. Please, the floor goes to you. I very much apologize that I will be not able to share the, the, the video with you because I have some technical problems which we were not able to solve. But I would like to admire Professor Nazar and Nuria to give you the very brief and very detailed report of 100 pages that we, that we wrote into the report, summarizing very detailed examples of what we can do in the area of housing policy. The last part of our report is a set of multi-level policy recommendations and actionable points. And we focus our, our activities and recommendations on three levels. We look on the local, national, and European level, because the, the picture should be looked from, from the larger perspective. Only municipality itself is not able to solve the 
housing problems in its own territory. Without the help of the national policy, national funding, national support, national legislation, probably there will be some problems. And we see very different situation in the area of Europe. If you look to Europe, the picture is very, very different. The housing situation in the European countries is different due the long-term approach. Nobody has a magic wand who can say, yes, tomorrow we will solve the problem of housing in Slovakia, in Latvia, in Spain. We need the long-term approach, which will help us to move somewhere. And the situation is dif different because the countries are moving along a different uh, lines. Some of them believed more in the market solutions. Market solutions means the responsibility for housing is with a person, is with a family. They should find a solution on the market and the state will help only those who are the most vulnerable. The homelessness, low-income groups, this is the socially socially oriented policy, which is very narrow. The universal policy is looking also on the middle income families, saying this also include into the concept of uh, housing policy of the state and should be included into the schemes of affordable housing. They can of course afford more if they are on the middle income, but they still need a help from the side from the side of the of the state so the combination of the local and national can help to solve the situation in the longer term of course there is a concept of social mix which is very very important in this respect and it's not always stressed in the policy of the particular countries erwin said at the beginning has mentioned problems which arise mainly after the general financial crisis in 2028 uh, means rising prices of the housing. This is what we face. The scarcity of the land. This is also what we face in our cities. And also the increase of the people with low and middle income wages, which are stagnating. And they are increasing the demand for the affordable and decent housing in their countries. What can be the reply? We recommend that the reply should start on the local level, of course. Local level means that in every city, they should analyze the situation according to the need of the social, public and affordable housing in the municipality, reflecting the needs of the particular city, be it the capital of Riga or Bratislava, or be the smaller city that we have many in Central and Eastern European countries. Then we need partners. Looking on the examples from Europe described by Professor and Nuria, we see that not municipalities are not able to solve the problem of housing themselves. They need partners. They need partners to help them to cover the, 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 the offer of the, of the affordable and social housing. Mainly, I mean the housing associations. This example coming from, from Austria, Netherlands, and also from Spain can be, a, can be a tool that our municipalities can think of and cooperate with to help to increase the stock of the, of the affordable and social housing. Of course, there are problems that can be solved only on local level. The scarcity of the land can be solved mainly by the city itself, by the taxation, active policy with the, with the land trusts and things like that. This is what we recommend in our, in our recommendations for the local level. Also, when speaking about the energy efficiency of the buildings connected with the Green Deal on the European level, this is also the local issue, but it should be very carefully, carefully managed by the cities, not leading to so-called renovations. You renovate the housing stock and then the people cannot afford to live there and should go somewhere else. This is very sensitive problem for the local level. 
On the local level, we of course should speak about also the social cohesion. The problem of homelessness is one side of the housing uh, issue coming to the middle class on the other side. So social cohesion is connected with this and also the social services to the most vulnerable, this can be only provided by the local level. And we strongly recommend to do this, not only provide the schemes like housing first for the homelessness, but to combine it with the, with the uh, social services organized by the, by the city. Of course, the tenant contracts, these are also managed locally. You should respect your tenants and find the best way how to prevent the misuse mentioned by Professor, uh, Professor Nazar, but on the, on the other side, to provide enough stock for the people living in social and affordable housing. So, so this is what we recommend to the local level. On the national level, we expect the policy which will be more universal, more universal than the targeted one. Targeted one means you are looking on the only on the vulnerable and socially socially problematic groups, but we advocate for the more universal approach to cover also the middle income family. Of course, the state should provide the schemes for these housing associations, for the associations that will mainly deal with providing social and probably affordable housing for affordable prices. This is what we recommend for, for the national level to organize the legislation to enable these uh, housing associations to complement. In some countries, like you, if you look in Austria, this is a good example of the, of the rental housing and the share of the rental housing in the, in the housing stock with social and affordable. Main provider are the housing associations. This is not the case in Slovakia. This is not the case in Latvia, where we strongly believed in privatization, selling the property to the people, selling the uh, concrete buildings that we built during the socialist and communist time to, directly to the hands of the people. But now we are looking back and saying, OK, but we do not have enough stock to provide social and affordable housing to the families who need it. So the state should organize the complementary uh, supply. And if we speak about the state, sh states should organize also the financing. The financing is very important to be the stable part of the GDP, maybe organized, like we mentioned, the Slovak example of the National Housing Fund, which is providing loans. But loans are repayable. And in longer time, the paybacks are increasing and decreasing the need to be subsidized and fun financed from the national or the regional or local budget. This is the scheme which is working in, in Austria mainly, but it's working also in other countries and should be, should be considered in the, national, in the national policy. Of course, this renovation and Green Deal is also the question connected with the role of the state. So, so we think that states should be active also in, in uh, this uh, area. And also the data. Professor mentioned that if we do not have data from particular countries, if we do not have data to compare the situation in Europe, we cannot say there can be any common goals coming to the European level and recommendations for European, because we think Europe should start with something like EU Observatory and Research Center on Housing. Housing should become a policy of Europe also, not only local, not only national. Europe should intervene because this is really one of the fundamental rights. And we think without the basis where Europe should understand what the situation in different countries of Europe is, without this data, observatories, analysts, Europe cannot intervene enough. We think housing policy should be part of the uh, social pillar rights, because this is really a part of the, of the European policy. We have tools like European semester to focus the country's attention to the housing policy, 
and then to control the progress because the development is slow. You cannot expect miracles in weeks or months and even in years. We can expect the progress in decades, but we need to know where to go. And this is where we advocate that Europe should play a more active role in the, in the work with the member states and uh, providing data, providing policies, providing concentrated examples and best practices. This is what Europe can do. And this is what we were trying in our report. And it is finish of my recommendations. You can read them in detail at the end of our report. I was trying to cover the most important of them to provide you the picture that we do not expect miracles. We expect the concrete actions that we can do together to change the situation of the housing policy in our particular countries in Europe. Thank you very much, Ervins. Well, yes, uh, Milan. Thank you very much to Milan. As Milan already noticed, post uh, socialist countries, post Soviet countries, um, there was a very popular opinion that free market will also solve housing issues. But we can see after this research that this hasn't happened. Cooperation between the private, public, and municipalities uh, is necessary and also cooperation uh, with uh, the highest levels of the, in the EU because this is the only way to reach long-term solutions. And I must say that in Latvia we still have a big inertia and people still believe that free market will solve the problems but I think this opinion is gradually changing. Now I would like to give the floor to Mrs. Liga Rasnacha. She is one of the most competent uh, researchers uh, of uh, social housing. She's representing the University of Latvia Liga. The floor is your, yours, please. Hello, can you all hear me? Do you hear me? Yes. Okay. I'm going to speak Latvian. But first, I would like to say a few words in English. For your uh, excellent uh, presentations and uh, bright uh, and brilliant uh, performance of main ideas of our project. And I think it is very important uh, that in uh, this uh, complicated times we could uh, meet uh, online. <laughs> So, now I'm going to speak a little bit more low-key about housing policy in Latvia and other Baltic countries. First of all, I would like to say that sometimes we may think, especially from the point of view of other countries, that the Baltic states, which are quite similar according to size and their historical experience, I also believe that their housing policy is quite similar. But I would like to say that, of course, we have a similar heritage. However, the solutions and the ways how the housing policy is developed is not that similar at all. Speaking about the common or the similarities. So this is, of course, the Soviet legacy, which basically means that uh, there are huge areas filled with uh, blocks of flats that have been built in the 1960s, 70s, and 80s. These uh, blocks of flats form the main part of the uh, residential stock in uh, the cities, in the main, in biggest cities, of course. In the, sec in the 21st century, it means a great challenge. Here you can see examples from the three capitals of the Baltic states, you can see how those multi-apartment block houses look 
even visually you can understand that uh, this is nothing to take pride in and judging from uh, the number of balconies and entrance entrances you can also understand that uh, uh, the size of the flats is most probably not very decent especially taking into consideration that now during the COVID pandemic we need to stay at home work at home study at home so these small flats are not, not quite suitable for the current situation so these are the common problems in the Baltic states. In all countries, uh, all Baltic countries at the beginning of the 90s, privatization of uh, these Soviet blocks of flats took place, but uh, this privatization was uh, related to individual apartments. So the apartments were privatized, but at the same time, the infrastructure of those buildings has remained indivisible and thus after this privatization several problems occurred as to how to maintain this uh, so-called common property which is indivisible one of the variants one of the options that is uh, supported also now is the uh, creation of uh, associations of landlords however there have been uh, many obstacles in the creation of such associations and uh, we can uh, provide a structure for these um, obstacles. So one type of obstacles is, for instance, the objective uh, spatial factors, because if we can imagine a five-story building, nine-story building with some uh, 60, 90 apartments, and we realize that these apartments are small, So a couple, well, like a 20 people could, could fit in one flat, or into one block of flat, then it's very difficult to take decisions between the owners of these flats. So sometimes these uh, owners of the flats uh, gather in the backyard, but we need to take into consideration the climate, and we need to take into consideration that it is often uh, very loud, outside it can rain it can snow so it's not a good solution for them to meet and it's very difficult to to rent some uh, some conference rooms uh, for the owners of these apartments in order to meet then of course this is an objective obstacle especially after the, after the first 10 years after privatization so um it is difficult to to maintain the buildings and um, it's also difficult to change uh, the way how we perform maintenance of uh, these buildings and therefore many people were not even interested in uh, starting to maintain their buildings and the third reason would be the uh, social composition of uh, people and also the so social factors Immigration was also a factor, immigration from all post-Soviet and uh, post-socialist countries. Namely, many uh, younger generation, uh, people from the younger generations have left Latvia and uh, those who remained were poorer and um, of older generations. So the readiness for change, for taking over the maintenance of the houses and uh, the socio-economic situation uh, does not allow for, um, for solving these problems. And the fourth is uh, the decision-making procedure, which is also not very beneficial and not uh, elastic enough. So these would be the common problems in all Baltic states with regards to those multi-story um, buildings. And among the common problems, I would also like to mention uh, low energy efficiency and low quality of these buildings. In public, very often we hear forecasts, well, how long will these houses stay? Are they going to collapse one day? And what, 
what other problems we might expect according to the um, to, to, to the technical analysis, we should not be worried that these houses would collapse. Lithuanian experts have uh, noted that they believe these uh, houses could serve approximately 125 years. But the, there is a problem regarding their infrastructure components because these compos components have a service duration of some 20 to 50 years. And we can also see that uh, in some cases, balconies are collapsing, pipelines burst, and so on. Thus, increasing the energy efficiency and renovation of these uh, buildings are very important. Such projects are carried, carried out in all Baltic countries, and also the financial uh, coverage is similar. 25% is usually comes from EU structural funds. 50% are usually covered by the residents. And usually uh, they take it as a loan. There is a problem that uh, Sometimes with these finances, it is not enough to renovate the whole building or all of the buildings. And another problem is that it's related to the quality of uh, these renovations. It hasn't been researched very thoroughly, but we can say that in every second case, the quality of renovation is low. Of course, visually you can see that it looks, these renovated houses look much better, but it doesn't always mean that uh, it is a good quality renovation. Different ministries are in charge of, uh, of the housing policy in Estonia and in Latvia. These would be the respective ministries of economic affairs. In, uh, Lithuania, in Lithuania, it is the Ministry of Economics, oh, sorry, the Ministry of Environment. In Latvia, municipalities play a very important role in this respect. Talking about housing policy objectives, these are quite similar in all Baltic states, maybe in Latvia, at the legal basis and the energy saving measures are uh, more important. But in Estonia, the first um, target is uh, to ensure access to housing for residents. But all in all, these policy objectives are uh, quite the same, quite similar. What about the housing policy results? There are several indicators. In uh, 2020, there was a the organization OECD carried out a survey on the, the Latvian housing policy. And as a result of this research, it was noted that uh, there is low, that uh, overpopulation, overcrowding is a huge problem in Latvia. I also looked at Eurostat data. And we can see that overcrowding is a really big problem. It's over 40%. Over 40% of the uh, apartments are overcrowded, and this is three times as, as uh, much as the uh, average figure in the EU, and twice as much as our neighboring countries. Besides, here we could also note Another aspect, namely the registration system of uh, residents of an apartment does not always uh, show the reality in this building or in this apartment. And maybe this uh, partly accounts for the bad data. The second indicator that I have chosen to include in my presentation is the deprivation of housing. 
so the proportion of houses without shower or bathtub which are of course very necessary amenities in latvia the results are the worst in comparison to um, estonia and lithuania in lithuania the situation is quite similar to the latvian situation and of course the european average is much better speaking about good practice so one of the positive things is the issue of group apartments in latvia for vulnerable groups and i would like to mention the cooperation between the ministry of welfare municipalities and the successful use of eu financing in this respect but of course this project is not enough for uh, target group groups and um, i also agree with every that um, housing policy cannot be solved only based on a specific target groups this issue is way too important to leave it only to certain individual measures speaking about individual measures in estonia there are villages for people with disabilities which is a very good example this is not the first village i think it's at least the second such village that has been created because um, in order to ensure independent life for people with disabilities it takes a lot of work and a lot of effort so what about the time constraints now i have come to my conclusions I'm not going to read all my conclusions, but I will mention one that I have not mentioned during my presentation, namely the situation of Latvia is the least beneficial from the Baltic states. And it's probably just because Latvia had chosen this neoliberal policy the state did not get involved in policy, housing policy issues at the beginning it was just regulatory issues then uh, compensations to the owners of the nationalized houses but these compensations were not big lately the, the state has uh, gotten more involved uh, in these issues there are several good initiatives and another thing that i would like to mention is uh, the accessibility or rather the inaccessibility of social housing because here in this respect latvia is the um, comes uh, second after greece with 0.4 percent of um, availability of social housing which is extremely low and the households uh, and the, um, the proportion of households that receive housing support from the municipality is only four percent but at the same time um, deep housing deprivation um, is uh, can be seen with 7.6 percent of households but i i hope it will improve because in latvia now we have a new residential rent law and as of 1st of july 2021 we will have a new calculation of housing allowance and i think it is much more supportive for the tenant in general, I would like to say that by analyzing data on uh, quality of housing, uh, the situation has improved. If we compare it to the situation before the previous, after the previous economic crisis, and uh, more and more innovative ways are found in order to secure good quality dwelling to people especially to people with uh, disabilities, senior citizens. Working at this project, 
I have realized that, for instance, in Austria, there is a very successful uh, operation of the uh, cooperative uh, associations. And I think this is another way how in many Western countries, we can solve very successfully the housing problems. But in order to introduce such cooperatives in Latvia, we would need special supportive policy from the state because so far the experience of cooperatives has not been very positive because we also used to have cooperatives in Soviet times. Thank you. Um, Thank you, Liga. Policy of available housing is quite often in Europe the agenda of social democrats. And in Riga, in the latest municipal election, the Progressive Party was one of the major winners who are also social democrats and uh, supporters of green policy. Today we have involved two representatives from this party, the co-chair of this party, Edmund Seperitis, who is also the head of Riga Housing Committee, and Justin Pantelieva, who is a member of Housing Committee of the city of Riga. I would like to give the floor to you now, so that you can highlight the major challenges that you see in Riga, currently as one of the biggest cities in the Baltics, and what you are planning to do in order to improve the situation and make housing more available. Yes, uh, thank you. Well, as we agreed, uh, Justine will first show you the presentation, and then I will add some additional aspects. So please uh, show Justine now, because she will be presenting. Yes, hello, everyone. I have drafted uh, my presentation in English, so our colleagues from other countries will be able to follow it very easily. Thank you all for this opportunity to talk to you, and I will highlight the most important problems and major challenges and what we are planning to do. And then Edmunds will uh, provide additional details on each of these aspects. I think uh, the Previous speakers were great in outlining the major uh, challenges across Europe, and uh, they do, do not differ much in Riga as well. One of the first things I have to say when we talk about social housing and uh, support for uh, residents of Riga is uh, that we have a relatively long queue for uh, social housing. It's uh, less than 2,000 people who are uh, waiting in this queue, but it is still a challenge that we have to face and we have to deal with uh, in the upcoming years. Demand is significant, but uh, the problem is uh, that in Riga, the housing stock has uh, aged significantly. Uh, the current uh, apartments that are available are in uh, a very bad condition and uh, many of uh, houses that were constructed during the Soviet times are essentially in uh, the final stages of their life. And as the previous speaker already said, the houses as them Themselves could stand for much lo longer, but the engineering infrastructure is a, a bigger problem. A bit on uh, statistics, 93% uh, of our residents live in uh, multi-apartment houses, but the, the most part of our housing stock was built after uh, the Second World War and uh, uh, are still a dominant uh, part of our, our housing stock. And a part of uh, this stock is such that uh, banks 
are no longer accepting them as a good investment. So it's uh, a red flag for all of us. and a signal for uh, this particular area of the housing market. And our total housing stock, if not uh, totally obsolete, uh, it is re relatively old and over the last 20 years there have been very few new houses constructed. Of course, uh, financing possibilities and bureaucracy are other obstacles uh, that uh, prevent the creation of housing owners, cooperatives, uh, which prevents further improvements as it comes to energy efficiency, for example. This has been a big problem in Riga for the last couple of years. There are only a few buildings that have been renovated and become more energy efficient. Uh, what was also said at the beginning, uh, the opportunity for cooperatives to develop uh, this uh, area. This is a new development and uh, something that should be considered uh, on the national level. And although Riga is a municipality like any other municipality in Latvia, we do not receive uh, support from the state in many important areas and the same approach seems likely for the next seven years. Uh, it appears that uh, we might uh, not receive the necessary uh, funding we require for constructing new housing. One of the main tasks of our municipality is to diminish the queue for social housing <coughs> that is necessary for various social groups. And we also need to think about renovation, a complex renovation, as legal already said. And we are also considering support to specific uh, social groups for example, teachers and large families, but we can agree with, with what was said previously, this is sectorial aid that will not solve the overall housing crisis that is present here in Latvia. I will only mention a few things that we have done for the time we have been in the Riga City Council. We have earmarked 1.2 million euros in order to renovate and develop existing uh, um, municipality apartments to diminish this queue I mentioned previously. That could help us uh, to add uh, 150 apartments. So it will not uh, eliminate the queue uh, in full, but it will be a good first step. We are also reconsidering our approach to renovation to our municipal flats. Uh, and uh, I think Edmonds will be able to talk on this more. The next step that we have already taken and where we have done some work uh, in the City Council is the, the Riga Housing Working Group. So the tasks here are to develop a conceptual report, to see what the problems are and what are the possible scenarios in order to solve these problems, uh, focusing on our municipal sector, but also thinking about how to include the private sector and expand the rental market, which is currently uh, very small and uh, Rental housing only represents 13% of our housing market in Riga. And for the beginning of next year, we are planning to develop a housing program for Riga, which would be the main strategic document and uh, uh, action document for Riga to see how we can provide uh, 
crisis uh, housing, but also we should consider how to work with the private sector and expand uh, the support mechanisms in general. The next step, which is uh, proceeding nicely, is the investment plan for the next seven years, the Riga Development Program 2027, which is an important document uh, and goes step in step with the EU planning documents. These tasks were laid down before uh, our party came to power in Riga, and it uh, indicates what uh, our main tasks are and this uh, framework uh, will also include a housing program for Riga. And the main uh, points here is a well-considered housing program, the necessity to provide housing that is available and affordable to various social groups, and also consider accessibility of uh, these uh, buildings because uh, th we have had some bad experience regarding accessibility and uh, such new standards would help to uh, deal with the problem of uh, overcrowding. Next uh, is complex uh, uh, renovation, which is an important uh, a step for the next seven years and the construction of new housing buildings and uh, drafting of uh, criteria and the uh, provision of uh, support tools to the private sector and uh, um, better cooperation with uh, societies and cooperatives. Next step. Uh, is the development of, of a housing uh, program, uh, the main part of which will be financing. So we need to uh, see how we can attract and uh, implement the funding in a better way, because that has not been done previously in the Riga municipality. We will uh, consider all options here. We are aware of the limitations uh, that Riga as a municipality has. And now I will give the floor to Edmunds, who can add something to what I said already. Yes, uh, thank you, Justina, very much. We agreed to construct our uh, presentation in such a way that at first uh, you have the details and then I can supplement also considering what the previous uh, speaker said and where we are located on this road. How can we transform our housing policy and implement all the benefits that we can have from a well-considered uh, housing policy? both for the municipality and for the society. First of all, we have to face up. Latvia is one of the countries that is very deep in a neoliberal uh, trouble. This is the concept that we have to work with. Uh, the housing offer is very fragmented. We have a very narrow a public uh, housing stock that we have to work with. That is uh, our position right now. And one of the things we have to work with now is to make sure that this approach is changed both in Riga and on national level. And uh, negotiations we have had indicate that uh, this change will be forthcoming and the municipality will gain a much more significant role in the future in this area. That's why I'm very glad that we can cooperate with the national level and thus improve the cooperation between the Riga City Council and our national government. We plan to be a very active participant when working on the national housing policy. The next uh, thing, uh, the framework where we are now, and especially what our European colleagues might find as 
being a bit weird is our policy has changed. The previous party that called itself Social Democrats, uh, called Harmony, uh, lost its support in Riga and is now replaced by our party, the Pro Progressive Party, which also considers them to be a new sort of uh, Social Democrats and have uh, distanced themselves from the Harmony Party and its positions. This will also clearly show why we see the need for great changes here in Riga. When we started working in the city council, we saw that there had been no housing policy. There were individual solutions that did make did not make a, a, an overall strategy. There were investments of several millions that uh, were not a part of an overall strategic uh, plan. And uh, one of the buildings uh, that we manage and that had been constructed recently, but uh, the flats there were constructed in such a way to give a great number of flats, but they forgot about the quality. So the flats that they have now are very small, very narrow. They are actually not up to the task. And the people who were offered these flats have turned them down. We have therefore um, paid attention to such uh, examples, and there are other examples I could give. And uh, it shows that if there are no policy targets and objectives, the results are not that good. And then I can tell you about how it is uh, to work in a municipality where these basic documents have not been developed. The major problems and challenges that we have had to de deal with was uh, summarizing information, gathering information, uh, changing our approach from the previous approach in under the previous management, where funding for housing was found on an ad hoc approach. Then the uh, building stock was increased. Uh, and there were there were some repairs done so some removed actions were implemented we want to change this approach we want an approach where we can define the target that we are going towards what justine said already clearly indicates we would like to be a municipality where there are no queues for social housing we would like to be a municipality that takes into account what liga rasnich said how much social support is necessary. We need to expand the groups that could be eligible for such support. And then we could see what is the number of housing we need to construct in order to achieve these objectives. We are well aware that this is a much more difficult, much more expensive approach and does not uh, uh, fit the usual policy objectives of uh, other parties. But our task is to change uh, this approach, to change the tools that are available to us as a municipality so that at the end of this work we can be proud, even if we move outside the way things used to be done. If we look at uh, the experience of our colleagues from Europe, then we can say that uh, that this experience that we have not seen here in Latvia has become common practice in other EU member states, and we need to move it to Riga as well. And uh, next, we must say it has been very difficult for us to invest in problem solving because there were no clear plans, no clear strategy. Therefore, the first task is to draft these uh, strategies and plans so that we see uh, where we are going to and how we can deal with the challenges that we face today. And then the final step, uh, funding. Currently, the municipality does not have a function to work on availability of housing. Uh, fin Finance-wise, it has not been uh, possible. There have been uh, various object, uh, obstacles uh, of legal nature and of practical nature, uh, cooperation with the Competition Council, for example. 
which would be important uh, to highlight that this is a function of the municipality. This is our objective. Affordable housing crisis, social housing, these are tightly interlinked uh, aspects. And in conclusion, just as Justin already said, in order for us to create an approach that is not based on some separate policy instruments, but on overall perception, we need to change the way we do funding. We cannot achieve the targets by simply investing uh, annual municipal funds without the use of financial instruments, without use of loans. I think our colleagues from other uh, EU states can clearly say what is the role of such uh, tools. This is the work that we have started now, so that we not only use uh, the EU multi-annual budget funds, not only the recovery and resilience funds that are now available, but that we can also locate financial instruments that would enable us to invest from the public sector through the use of societies or owners' cooperatives and invest in the critical areas so that we can correct the errors that uh, remain from an over-reliance on the free market. And uh, as uh, Justin already uh, noted, uh, there has been cultural change, there has been changes in the way we cooperate. This is a, a story of many uh, properties that uh, we have in Riga where we have to expand uh, cooperation, expand the legal basis that would enable such cooperation so that co-owners from uh, many buildings can uh, realize that they are the owners, they have to cooperate with other owners in order to invest in their buildings, to make use of financial instruments in order to achieve the goals of environment policy and other policies. There are many cases where funding restrictions were the cause for inaction, but in many other cases, it was um, cultural or uh, social norms and customs that stood in the way. And therefore, we are willing to work on these issues as well, to raise awareness, to educate, to train, to use our institutions and municipal bodies to expand cooperation and so that we can move from the ultra-individualistic approach to an approach that facilitates cooperation and facilitates investment in the housing area that is so direly needed. So these are the changes that we are planning to have in Riga. Thank you for your attention. And once we have time for a question, up till now the construction of housing was left uh, to the private banks. It was their monopoly and uh, the public uh, bodies paid little attention to it. You said that the municipality would need more funds and uh, legal freedom. What could be the national solution for this? Should there be more involvement from a national bank or some targeted subsidies? How do you see this? And what are the sums that would be required here in Riga? Yes, uh, this is a question where several options are uh, possible, but the key word here is the public uh, funder, public uh, creditor. So these are institutions that we need to involve as partners and a significant role has to be played by the National Development Bank Altum and uh, cooperation with the relevant ministries. So the key element here, there has to be a more pronounced role of a national funding provider. And I'm not opposed to private banks being involved in this process. But of course, 
to reach the amount of investment necessary. We have to go for long-term loans with lower interest rates and lower uh, requirements for returning these loans. So I'm considering 40 years or something like that, uh, and that is not attractive for the private sector, but they could be involved in different ways. Big Rasnache in her comments said that uh, this funding could come from the pension fund level too. It is true, some of this fund, some of these funds doesn't do not remain here in Latvia, but are invested elsewhere. We talked a lot about cooperation. We talked about national, private, uh, cooperative societies, but not so much about NGOs. After the Soviet times, uh, uh, cooperatives uh, have uh, left a bad taste in our mouth because it was mandatory before and now we see that some good examples are changing the situation. Today we have a representative, also a board member of the Freedom and Solidarity Foundation. And uh, so our next speaker is uh, and the floor goes to him. Thank you. I hope you can all hear me and see me well. Thank you for uh, inviting me to this discussion. I think one of the most, one of the main challenges now is not to repeat myself because uh, we have heard a lot of valuable information. I'm not going to show you a presentation. I'm going to tell you about uh, my opinions because uh, I was free to choose the subject that I would like to speak about with regards to social and affordable housing. And uh, I would like to say that uh, non-governmental organizations uh, are very much interested in these issues and they are doing research in these issues. And we can see that uh, one of the reasons why we are paying a lot of attention to this fact is the uh, foreign experience, because looking at uh, Austria and other countries, EU member states, we can see that the third sector or the uh, civil sector has um, an even more important role in the housing sector. And we can see that these questions are also becoming more and more topical in Latvia. Therefore, it is very important for us to speak about NGOs and also about social entrepreneurship, which has also a legal status in Latvia that can carry out such function. So my story is um, it's more based on uh, on issues that we are beginning to work with and the content that i will be offering will be like a blueprint so like my first vision about these issues because it is clear that since uh, in latvia housing policy has not been formulated uh, in a strategic level during the last 30 years is that but uh, Erwin's and League already mentioned because uh, there was a lot of reliance on the free market and that the free market will ensure all the social um, needs. Therefore, these uh, issues are not very clear and nobody knows how to solve these issues. And now that we have seen that there is a new housing strategy created in Latvia, it is important to talk about that. So the context has to be taken into consideration. Of course, I don't want to repeat myself because um, we all know what problems we face with regard to house, housing policy. And it is difficult to say uh, from which end we start resolving these problems. So is it quality of housing? Is it accessibility? Are these the vacant houses? We have not heard this um, issue yet, but in Riga there is a problem related to vacant buildings as well, so which is the most urgent problem, it's difficult to say. 
So I'm going to talk about my initial thoughts regarding the challenges, challenges that the NGOs are faced. So these are like the hopes what the dynamic NGO sector can provide us. One of the arguments that uh, we should take into consideration in this upcoming housing strategy is the fact that uh, we can uh, have a look at all those uh, results and uh, say that uh, we need to build so and so many houses and um, overcrowding needs to be reduced by so and so many percent, percentage points. But I think these uh, results are only one part of the problem. The second very important thing is the, are the principles uh, of implementation of these housing policy principles in a democratic way, which would mean that uh, we would need to think about the method of uh, how this housing policy is introduced. And here I think uh, the NGO issue is vital. Why am, am I speaking about NGOs? We have uh, heard um, the owners of the apartments, and I think uh, we need to have a look at this conceptual framework in order to see where the NGOs belong in this respect. So the primary thing is that the private market cannot uh, resolve all the uh, urgent needs, but those public-private partnerships are a good solution. However, these also entail certain risks, as it always is. The benefits are privatized, but uh, the uh, risks are socialized. There will always be certain risks related to private public partnerships. And if we are talking about building new residential buildings, then we can see that one of the main needs is to build uh, apartments for those residents who cannot afford paying high rents. And of course, this is a great challenge. And the question is, uh, is it possible to create such a financial project that is lucrative enough for them, but also to give the benef benefit that are the investors ready to wait for more than 10 or 20 years for the returns? And this is a challenge which is difficult to solve. The Latvian housing market and the purchasing power of uh, Latvian residences as it is and the private sector will always have certain limitations with regard to how many people or how many social groups can, uh, can it service or serve. And on the other side, because we can also have a look at the public sector, the state of the municipalities as the main uh, leading force uh, or main, maintaining force for the, for the housing sector. We also know the historic background in Latvia and also the risks that we are facing. Sometimes uh, these are ideological risks and are not quite real, but we need to take them into consideration also when uh, thinking about new housing policy, because of course we can create the legal forms of all kinds and uh, financial uh, frameworks, but if the public and the society does not react on this, if they don't want to fit in these new legal forms that, in our opinion, are perhaps uh, progressive and, uh, and are copy-pasting the good practices from other countries, then uh, if the society is unwilling to accept that, then uh, it will not solve the problem because we need to take into consideration uh, the public opinion with regard to such new legal forms. And therefore, NGOs or social entrepreneurs can uh, become the middlemen between the private public partnership and uh, the um, municipal sectors and, uh, and they can now uh, come forward with some initiatives because of course the partners cannot uh, dictate all the needs so there are different challenges but the main thing that i wanted to talk about is uh, uh, to think about the ngo sector because of course we can take the decision that we want to develop the ngo sector and to increase our confidence but the thing is 
what exactly should we do, what is the um, policy of our actions, how are we going to proceed with this. And we need to look at the NGO sector as it is today in Latvia, and we can see that the competence and that the um, expertise in, in Latvia is quite limited. We don't have any NGOs uh, involved in the um, housing uh, policy because this was not a political priority during the last 30 years. But uh, in other countries, it's, it's, it's different. So, speaking about the group housing or other social services uh, oriented to the um, social risk group, there is a lot of things to do. And talking about those people, we can see that uh, some people have a, a relative interest to, um, to develop the housing policy, but it's clear that there are certain risks, uh, financial risks and other kinds of risks and uh, organizational risks. Here we are talking about new competencies, and this makes us think about uh, how we can uh, find a solution because we can see that the present sector and the people working there, they have uh, not had great chance to um, to delve into these issues. So it means that we need to do this work from scratch. And now there is again the question, how shall we proceed with this? What kind of competences uh, should these uh, NGOs have? Are we going to create NGOs uh, with uh, general competence, universal competence in housing issues? So these would be people who know how to build residential buildings, how to maintain them, or what know what to do with vacant houses, uh, who know how to protect the interests of residents. Or do we need to find organizations specializing on, for instance, vacant buildings or some separate organizations involved in building issues? Or are we allowing, in terms of financing, whether there is a technical problem? Like so are we talking about the uh, social entrepreneurship sector? So we saw that uh, this was also created from scratch, but with the European financing and allowed people to be very confident that their projects will not be stopped at some point, that they will still be financed. And I think uh, here we also must speak about long-term investment if we want to develop uh, the NGO sector also in terms of um, getting involved in uh, solving housing challenges. Because we cannot expect that uh, the results will be very fast. So this is also one of the challenges of course, we want to see results pretty fast, and it is clear that the housing policy is one of the policies uh, where uh, the results um, can be seen only after many years, even 10 years, and we have to take into consideration this. However, the hopes around uh, the social entrepreneurship and their involvement in the housing policy would not only stimulate uh, the local economy, because if we would finance grassroots organization, then this would be just one result. But it also means that the housing policy will be more linked to the real needs of the population, because very often we are creating policy from the point of view of, uh, of capital and uh, we are not very clear about uh, specific, more concrete needs. However, if we change this attitude and if we allow the NGOs to develop in a more independent way in the regions, in the Daugavpils, in the city of Valmir, Liepaja, elsewhere, and also outside the um, cities, then uh, people would be able to react to real needs in real terms. And I think this would be one of the um, most essential promises that we could give to create a dynamic, uh, inclusive sector. Because the pandemic also showed that um, 
the state uh, had needs a lot of time to, to react to unexpected things. They need to uh, contact all necessary institutions in order to pass decisions, but NGOs are um, be more flexible. And uh, it, it allows them to react more quickly if, in case of new needs. So this is all from my side. As I already said, the issue of NGO is a, a very important issue and it should be definitely included. Thank you, We lost you at, at the end, but this is not due to censorship. However, your time is up. Thank you very much. Very often we organize uh, discussions um, and I would like to say that our civil servants are at the most disadvantaged position in such discussions because uh, other people, they are free to speak about um, the way they see things should be like, but civil servants, they need to talk about the, the current policy and in the framework of the current legislation. At the same time, I think that uh, civil servants also have their own vision that they can offer, and they are also able to say what we should pay our attention to. And therefore, we have invited two representatives, one from the Ministry of Economics and the other one from the Ministry of Welfare of Latvia, who could uh, tell their vision about the current situation and uh, about the, the future development of the state. And now I would like to give the floor to Mr. Martin Chowder, who is the um, representing the Ministry of Economic. And uh, he's the head of the Department of Housing Policy of the Ministry of Economics. And then afterwards, Diana Yaka, is the, who is the vice director of the, the director of the Department of Social Policy of Planning and Development of the Ministry of Welfare. Martin, please. Yeah, paldies par iespēju uzstāties. Ļoti interesanti runāt. Thank you for this opportunity to talk to you. And the speakers mentioned the various problems, so I will start my presentation with a brief overview which I, of things I would like to uh, mentioned that are not in my presentation. Yes, of course, there are a lot of legislative initiatives, for example, the residential tenancy law, which we think will attract more investment from the private sector. Then uh, the previous speaker also talked about uh, NGOs and uh, the involvement of uh, apartment owners themselves. There have also been some significant changes. The Supreme Court um, adopted a ruling two years ago that uh, owners of apartments are subject to law. This means they don't have to organize associations, any legal uh, entities. They can be as a representative, as a manager, but uh, this uh, society as such will be a subject of law that will be able to uh, enter into commitments, conclude agreements with the third parties. This uh, procedure is currently in our parliament and it will have the, its second reading next uh, week and then it will be written into law. Many other laws have been already adopted that significantly simplify decision-making, especially for buildings in the old town, in uh, buildings with co-owners since last February. There is a, a regulation that in order to renovate a building, only 50% of owners have to agree, not 100% as it was previously. And also for other decisions, uh, there is a possibility to make decisions by simple majority and not by two thirds. 
and similarly to many other uh, countries is an important uh, addition that uh, prevents the accumulation of uh, debts. This states that uh, management fees and uh, utility debts are recovered for the first mortgage. So this will prevent a, a situation where the state will not receive anything because everything will be uh, given to the first mortgage creditor. Of course, all these decisions take time and uh, we can now see some results and what we have planned now will probably appear on the agenda some 10 years later. I think this previous approach, which was characterized as neoliberal in one of the presentations, was good in 1990s. But as the generations change, uh, people and politicians have understood how important housing policy is. And therefore, more funds and resources are allocated in order to, for example, study the life cycle of uh, housing stock. We look at the Soviet time buildings. We try to see whether these are still uh, safe to use and what are the most common problems and uh, uh, best solutions so that we can maintain and repair these buildings as necessary. We have also developed the first uh, uh, standard uh, construction project so that any private investor or um, public body, a municipal developer could cut their costs by not spending funds on, on uh, projects and take these standard projects and construct buildings. There are also grants for uh, large families that uh, cover uh, a part of uh, their loan, especially for families with many children. I hope I have not made an error in my presentation because we use it to, to show the involvement of the state and the change from a narrowly focused to a more general approach and uh, support. So I will now try to share my presentation. Just some technical issues. So I will uh, talk about the availability of housing. We have found that in Latvia, if we divide our households by income, as we see on this slide, that our society can be <laughs> divided in three major ca categories. First of all, households with the lowest income. And the support here is uh, housing allowance and social housing. And by social housing, I mean municipal rental apartments. And then the middle class without support, as the OECD study showed, there are 44% of households that have a relatively high level of income, so they do not uh, qualify for support from the municipality, but yet they cannot afford uh, to buy uh, an apartment in a Soviet time building if they try to do it under market conditions. And the most wealthy part, which can also uh, allow to have a mortgage, but usually also in uh, obsolete uh, building stock, and only a few of them can afford to have enough funds to build a house or um, an apartment in a new project. So most of these uh, categories are in need of a 
greater or smaller support when they try to buy housing. If we talk about uh, the layer that includes the less income families, then we have allocated 60.9 million euros, which will be used to create 1800 high quality social or uh, rental housing. As for the, uh, the middle class, the plan is to construct around 700 low rental cost housing units, and that would cost around 43 million euros. And for the well-off households, and there are plans for loans to construct housing under market conditions. And I will talk on each of these. The first is a support for constructing houses under market conditions. What's the goal here? Is to facilitate private investment so there are more houses that can be rented or sold for an affordable price. And the support would take the form of amendments in governmental regulation regarding loans to uh, micro, small or middle-sized uh, economic operators. And the plan is that this will be aimed at projects outside Riga and outside municipalities near Riga. So Adaji and other uh, nearby municipalities would not be eligible. Total uh, funding for one project would, will, would be 2.85 million euros with a payback term of 15 years and uh, with a loan for up to five years. Here next, uh, the middle class and the major hope here is to have various support instruments and the funding would be the greatest as in this category. The RRF program foresees almost 43 million euros. And the objective here is to provide uh, affordable housing to middle class. This would also apply to the territories outside Riga and its nearby municipalities. This uh, would be aimed at people for a single room flat with income up to 980 euros to a uh, room flat 1,635 euros and at least two people and for three and more room flat up to 2,450 euros and at least two persons. The aim here is to take care of people who earn more than low income uh, persons. And uh, the goal here is to construct low cost housing where the rent Uh, rent would be no more than 4.4 euros per square meter. And when management and the utilities are included, it would not exceed 6 euros. If I'm not wrong, in Valmira, the total costs per square meters were about about 4.7. Valmira was the first municipality that created the uh, housing for this uh, target audience, and it uh, constructed several houses aimed at this particular group. What are the other conditions? The rental house will have to have a management plan for the building, for its life cycle, and there will have to be uh, contributions made for the maintenance of the building, so they not see the situation as we is for private houses right now when people don't care about how the building will be managed in the future. And this means that when communications have to be changed, uh, the costs are very great because the condition is very low. And this program aims to create at least 700 low-cost rental apartments 
And for as for time frame, it is currently being coordinated with the European Commission, especially if, when it comes to the level of income that is necessary in order for people to be eligible for this. This is our uh, second attempt to discuss it with the Commission and consider this level of income. Uh, previously, we had set this level at uh, 1500 euros, but the Commission said it's too high and new criteria have to be developed. And the future steps, it's submission of application and issue of grants, which could start in 2022 and in 2023. One project could take about a year and a half. So we are in 2021 and we will see the first results of this only in a couple of years. What is the implementation model? The idea is that there is a combination of funding sources. First of all, the investor itself, whether it's a public or private co capital company, will have to contribute to at least 5% themselves. Then the RRF, RRF funding provided to Altum, and Altum provides half of uh, the necessary funding, so 70% of the project cost, because as you can see, the grant is 32%, and half of it is funded by a commercial bank. So in this uh, situation, both Altum and the commercial bank is involved. If the commercial bank refuses to participate in this project and Altum considers this project to be viable, Altum will provide the loan uh, also covering the part of the commercial bank. There will be a special uh, housing uh, availability fund where money will be invested and work not only for this project, but also for the time when the money has been paid back. The construction could uh, look like this. The limit for new projects is 200 flats for major cities and 100 cities, 100 flats for other cities. The distribution of funding is for regions set at the governmental level. So, for example, if we consider Rezekne, a city outside Riga, we have to see whether they have spent their limit, and if there are only a couple of flats remaining, then this uh, rental house can be built. How will this look uh, year by year? For the first 15 years, the rental fee will cover the commercial bank uh, loan and self-participation. From year 15 to year 30, the, the rental fee will be to cover the autumn loan and it will be uh, contributed to the housing availability fund. And after year 30, 50% of the rental will be uh, paid into the housing availability fund. So what is the future development in this program? We have a project with the European Commission on the model of this uh, housing available availability fund. When the money will be spent, the plan is to use a long-term solution. So within the technical project, the OECD has looked at it, what will be the institutional model, what will be the funding project, what will be the forces. Maybe the European uh, Investment Bank can be involved or some other uh, loan providers, maybe pension funds or changes in regulation. As for the housing fund, we will see what our experts will suggest for it. And now the final chapter, which deals with the most vulnerable persons. We understand that municipalities by themselves do not have the capacity to deal with all the questions that are related to housing provision. So that aim of this program is to provide uh, housing to people with the lowest level of income. 
which used to be the fully autonomous function of municipalities. And the idea is here that the housing would be created in regions where entrepreneurship or employment facilitation projects are planned. So to avoid the situation that we build apartments in a place where the residents don't have any opportunity to develop their life, to find employment and so on. So we will have this support in regions where there are queues for social housing. 85% of the grant will be to eligible costs of the eligible costs will be a grant and there will be limited construction costs for renovation 350 euros per square meter and for construction and reconstruction it's 1200 euros per, per square meter and as in the previous period uh, program there will have to be a building maintenance plan for the entire life cycle and the regular contributions to maintain the building we will also help on the methodological level on how to optimize their maintenance uh, fee and uh, what are the operations uh, are possible for, for specific levels of maintenance fee. And the result that we anticipate is uh, at least 1,865 high quality social or rental housing units, uh, the governmental regulations should be approved next year. And by the end of next year, we could start reviewing applications for grants. As for the grants themselves, they could be provided from year 2022 to 2029. Thank you. So now uh, I will give the floor to my colleague from the Ministry of Welfare. Ten minutes, that means okay, thank you. But the final speaker, we have an enormous challenge to say something that hasn't been said so far. Many important things that I would like to accentuate have already been said, but I will try not to repeat myself. What I would like to mention at the very beginning is that decent quality and affordable housing is uh, one of the basic human needs and the fact that we are discussing about this and, and uh, noting that still the large majority of people why they do not have access to housing or that their housing conditions are not in line with basic needs it shows that the solution should be found as soon as possible uh, here and now as Mr. Shubayev certainly said but uh, it is important to note that uh, we will be able to see the results of the previous case. Um, I, have, uh, I have prepared some facts about the current situation, but I think that most speakers characterize the situation very well, and it is more than clear that there are certain issues and problems related to the housing sector. And therefore, I would only like to talk about four problem areas in order for us to prepare for uh, more ambitious steps in housing policy. And um, I'm going to concentrate more about more on the availability of housing. The first block of issues that I would like to turn your attention to is the thematic and strategic framework in order to understand in general how complex this question is and uh, the characteristics uh, related to the lack of housing. In the, uh, on the EU level, it is um, suggested to use the typology of uh, the policy for homelessness and health shortages and there are several categories of homelessness and housing shortages so these are homeless people roofless people uh, these are people without housing 
they, they, they have um, shelters provided or they live in institutions due to lack of housing or they live in temporary dwellings. The third type would be uh, people living in unsafe housing, unsafe household conditions, uh, at risk of eviction, um, in violent conditions. And the fourth type would be uh, uh, this European typology has not been adapted in Latvia and it is not used in housing policy, neither in statistic data recording, population, or analysis. And now that we are working on the new housing policy, it is um, a possibility for us to introduce this uh, typology because we can see that uh, most of the population of Latvia fall into this typology. Why is it important? Why is it important to define this? I think it's important because if we want uh, to plan the public investment in a targeted way and develop certain services related to resolving the housing issues, then uh, we should introduce the typology. Of course, uh, we are kind of um, subjecting this planning investment um, according to what we have in legislation, and therefore it is important to define it. And as soon as we have defined it, we need to understand what kind of support should be granted and what uh, the principles of providing this aid should be. And thus I have come to the second block of issues, mainly the differentiation of uh, aid. The previous speakers already mentioned that uh, you can differentiate in, uh, in certain different ways. Uh, there could be services at the state level, municipal level, there should be different kinds of aid, social plots, um, and so on, based on the needs of the population and uh, what kind of aid they need. Thinking about the, the lack of uh, of housing, we can uh, see that this is a very complex problem, and all speakers have noted that in their presentation as well. And there are also different reasons and different ways how a person uh, can uh, arrive at homelessness and how to get out of the situation. And therefore, the Ministry of Welfare believes that uh, there should be many folded. Uh, differentiate the solutions for homelessness and they should be also um, individual because there are no tailor made uh, uh, no tailor made solutions possible because the situations of people differ their health uh, differs their um, employment situations differ and so on so we need to take into that take that into consideration and this of course has an impact as to whether we will invest more in the uh, construction of social buildings or uh, group apartments uh, and of course we need to think about the services related to these um, and we also need to make an agreement on the principles of granting A. One of the basic principles, well, maybe it's even the most important principles, is to avoid or to prevent the segregation and legalization of beneficiaries of uh, these drug and we can see examples from the Netherlands and other countries and we believe that it is important to stress this issue also in Latvia because this is really need to be taken into consideration. Also the Ministry of the Economy noted that uh, the uh, place where the special um, residential building is located is uh, chosen so that uh, uh, transport infrastructure is available, employment is available, and so on. And I would also like to stress with regard to social plans that there should be temporary accommodation until the person or the household um, reaches a better situation, a more stable situation, that the income is rising and that the person is uh, ready to move uh, to a different apartment and, and start uh, having the opportunity to look at a better accommodation. And of course, there can also be some, uh, some cases when it becomes temporary residence because uh, for certain person uh, it is no longer possible to change anything uh, in terms of income. 
one. And then uh, some additional services, the principle of additionality of services, because it is very naive to think that by only providing the accommodation of certain groups of population, uh, problem is solved. Because if we want to solve the problem uh, the whole, in a complex way, then uh, we should take into consideration that uh, sometimes a social worker or a family assistant or a social assistant or is necessary or social rehabilitation might be necessary, for instance, for people who have suffered from um, substance abuse or, um, or um, uh, Violence and maybe there are some certain sort of technical aids necessary. And here I have come to the fourth block of issues, which is about the target groups. I agree that uh, housing policy should not be targeted only on certain groups, but it is a very important policy issue. If we have uh, defined what kind of uh, aid should be granted and the basic principles of granting the aid are clear and we can identify the target groups, then we must say that with regard to certain target groups, we can, uh, we can, we can assume that uh, housing deprivation is one of their problems and uh, these people most probably cannot uh, make use of the um, presidential market um, you know, and, and therefore we need to take into consideration those limitations. I will mention just a few of those groups. Uh, persons who do not have any organization like homeless people, refugees, um, alternative status holders, um, persons um, who have um, lost their accommodation because the uh, uh, place this apartment is no longer safe. Uh, people who have suffered from violence who also need some other type of supports uh, besides housing supports. And here I would also mention people with disabilities and also persons who uh, are um, who spend a certain time of their life in institutions, for example, prisoners, children left without parental care after they have uh, reached the age and they have come out of, it, out of family care and adults who have uh, moved from a long-term social care institution and independent life in uh, society. So, for instance, any orphan or child left without parental care at the beginning of the independent life after a family care and need some support for housing uh, issues. And that the person would rely only on the municipality in order to provide this young person with housing immediately after the end of the out of family care. The residential stock is sufficient only in um, 63 municipalities. Well, it might seem quite a lot because it's more than half, but I think this is still a worrying factor. And the lack of affordability of housing for young people at the outset is, uh, is a very serious challenge for these young people and uh, very often it leads uh, to, the, to, to bad scenarios so we believe that uh, municipalities also need some support in order to solve this problem and we hope that this will also be included in the uh, housing policy and uh, another group that i would like to pay more attention to is uh, people with mental disability uh, of course affordability of housing it's, it's very important and uh, housing facilities should be adapted uh, to the disabilities sometimes these mental disabilities are combined with physical disabilities and in order to ensure a relatively independent life uh, these uh, buildings need to be adapted so there should be some additional financial support and uh, additional social services so here we need to combine the aid so provide not only for housing but also for services at the moment the most the best solution for people with functional uh, disabilities are the group houses or group apartments because uh, 
besides dwelling facilities, there is also individual support provided for solving different problems. The uh, development of group apartments is quite slow. However, until uh, 2022, uh, there is a plan to create, uh, to create 53 group homes or apartments in 126 sites. So as I already mentioned, this is what we planned five years ago, but um, only now we can see it finally come true. Because, uh, of course, uh, it takes time to carry out these projects. And before I close, I would like to emphasize uh, that uh, in order to promote housing availability, the content is very important, both at strategic level and in terms of security groups, uh, principles for uh, the provision of aid, differentiation of aid and sustainability, but the, uh, practical, for the practical implementation, um, there is sufficient and proportionate investment needed. And these investments must be prioritized because here we are not talking about some kind of exclusive services. We are talking about meeting the basic human needs and enforcing social rights. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. I think we have managed to stick to our timetable. Maybe some of the panelists have a question or comment on what you heard today. Yes, I would like to make use of this opportunity if Martin Schauders is still here. I would like to ask about the cooperation with Altum. I have experience when considering insulation projects. I know that there has to be an agreement with the residents, but if there is a situation that Altum has approved the project, but the residents find an expert who lets them understand that a lot of things have to be changed, but Altum says, no, it has been approved, no amendments are possible. Have you considered uh, making this system more flexible? Yes, thank you for your question. I will not be able to provide a very accurate answer because the uh, insulation program is uh, the task of my colleagues in other departments, but I think they are well aware of this and for the new planning period, they will make uh, their own conclusions regarding the mistakes from made in the past and there will be some changes. Yes, uh, thank you for this. I think that would also help involve residents more and build their trust towards this process. Thank you. As a moderator, I will use this opportunity to ask a question to Martin as well. Just briefly, could you say why Riga is excluded since it is uh, the major uh, residence center? And uh, second, when a municipalities can apply for these funds to construct uh, housing units? Yes, as regards the first question, this is uh, objections from commercial banks. I did not participate in these negotiations myself, so I cannot give you any details. But uh, basically, they say that this might be due to funding provided from commercial banks. And uh, also, when there is a rejection from a bank, maybe Altum could uh, provide uh, the entire funding that think that's just uh, too much bureaucracy, but the negotiation is still going on. This is just our current proposal, and there are many other processes ongoing that could uh, make the process more difficult. The next question uh, regarding whether Smilton will be able to apply, I showed the uh, timetable, there are various tables starting from 2022 in one program and in another program it was uh, an earlier date, if I'm not wrong. Justine, you have a comment. 
Yes, I can show that as yes. we had uh, a discussion this week with the rental market developers, and they said uh, that Riga is considered to be a high risk segment, and banks are not all that interested uh, to provide funding. So this is an interesting argument. This is an issue that I keep coming back to why Riga is missing out on so much funds since it's RRF funding where we could have added a section that is aimed at Riga as a very significant player in the housing sector in our country. Yes, well, this question should be aimed at the banks as well. We should have in involved them in this discussion. But banks also say they do not sort of provide funds to houses built in a rural side. So maybe we need more banks or maybe we need to involve them less. Are there any other questions or comments? Per, can you hear us? There. He might not be here, but he could have had a comment on similar studies in Germany. Edmund, after listening what others said, do you have any comments on uh, national level plans? Would you do something uh, differently? Well, main comment I can say, and what I see as a key for our future is uh, our further work, which we also saw in the presentation uh, of the Ministry of Economics in order to attract the uh, funding. Currently, RRF, uh, MMF, and other sources, if we line it up with needs that we have, we see there is still a lot of amount that is lacking. And we, when we look closer at this subject, it uh, is clear that uh, housing is not quite the classical recipient of grants. This is more an investment and therefore appropriate uh, financial instruments should be used as in other European countries, including in Eastern Europe. So we have great hopes uh, for this uh, particular aspect and uh, we see that the situation is forthcoming. We need to be more active and uh, defend our positions in uh, negotiations with banks and to propose them opportunities to take part in these programs, uh, providing some uh, advantageous conditions, because uh, the level of their participation is insufficient, not only in Latvia, but also in Riga, in the housing stock. So we will have to have some solutions in uh, this regard as well. And I hope the private banking sector realizes that this is a challenge of national scale. I think uh, their uh, objections are not entirely justified. Maybe Martin has something to add or, or we will leave it for a later discussion. Okay, then I can see Bear uh, has uh, returned and he managed the Friedrich Ebert Fund in the Baltics. Maybe he can give his perspective, for he has been re living in Latvia for two years and has addressed uh, this issue as well. And quite recently, you also had another uh, study on housing policy. So maybe you can provide some comments on that. Thank you very much, Erwins. Um, 
Yeah, sorry for that. I had to drop out for a minute, so I'm not right up to date what was the discussion in the last 10 minutes because phone was ringing. But to give a general impression on this discussion, thank you very much for, for all the participants. And as Erwin has said, I moved to Latvia in 2019, coming from Berlin, a city which has huge problems with its housing sector. And I tried to transfer these ideas to, to Riga because in the beginning I saw some similar problems and I well, uh, frankly said, I ran into a wall. There was no discussion. There was not much thinking about that. And from my perspective, this discussion only two years later, with all the points being made today in a European context, also on a, on a regional context, what Edmonds has said, that you're going to go for a strategic approach in the housing sector. There's so much music in it, like Sway in Germany, which is, which is impressive. And um, I must say that um, you're in Latvia, you're much better timing wise than we have been in Germany because in Germany we have been sleeping too long. We have trusted also the market forces too long. And um, I think it's it's very interesting to see how, how in, in Latvia and in the Baltic itself is um, they're trying to bring together both because um, you know you, you cannot you cannot do solve the housing problem without the market but you cannot leave it to the market alone. So the strategic approach, which I've been hearing here today, also from the representative of the ministries, I think it's very much appreciated. I think you're on a very good way. And um, as I said, I have not been listening in the last 10, 15 minutes, but I wanted to bring up one issue, which I don't know, which has, if it has been addressed, but um, I think Andres was speaking um, shortly about that. What about uh, your your views on the on the, the the vacant or the empty buildings, especially in Riga, and uh, the views on that that these kind of buildings are used as an asset? And is there something we can do on bringing these? buildings and these stocks back to the housing markets. This was something which I had in mind and noted on the earlier discussion, but uh, I don't know if that was addressed. So thank you for that. Yeah, Paul yes. uh, Yeah, that, that's these are. Yes, thank you. So Edmunds and Justine, this is more for you because there's a problem with property rights. What uh, the municipality can do with these dilapidated buildings that are sometimes in the very downtown of Riga. Do you have anything to add? Yes, there are several instruments that we should use more often. I believe that uh, comparing cadastro value to actual value could be, could be a significant tool that would also increase the real estate tax and it would be a greater motivator for their owners to resolve these situations, to bring these uh, properties uh, back uh, for the benefit of society, to have apartments there or to sell the property to another owner who would be willing to do something with it. That could be one tour, one tool, but uh, unfortunately it seems that it will not be forthcoming. It works uh, partially, but it would be easier if the financial instruments could be more impactful. The other solutions that we have available is uh, to uh, order this uh, property to be brought to, order, uh, to re be repaired, and then it is done by the municipality itself. For example, for municipal properties, one of the solutions we are looking at is to be much more active in renovating them. So some of these properties in the downtown area belong to the municipality. We have just not had the necessary funds to repair them. Private property, this is a topic I have not uh, and delved into in detail, and that is one of the tasks our working group will have to turn its attention to. And just to add to this, Free Riga is an example of this, and an uh, organization uh, that has received the status of being of public benefit in uh, current regulation that has worked and has been a good motivator for various societies. One aspect is that the cooperation from the uh, city council to resolve such issues as technical condition and uh, uh, 
coordination. So this is, might be one of the reasons why other free league initiatives are not forthcoming. But this is one way to facilitate and uh, motivate other societies to, uh, to take part in this process. Thank you. I can only share my experience some time back of, in the financial crisis of 2008 and a lot of uh, commercial premises were abandoned and then the city council where I was working at the time uh, was ready to be a mediator and allow creative enterprises to use these premises so they would cover the utility costs and the city council would guarantee their presence. But uh, there was a lack of trust and this whole process was very burdensome. And what Edmonds and Justin already said, uh, this uh, risk that we give this uh, premises to someone for cheap so that at least there is someone there well, the owners were not ready to do that. They were ready to pay the utilities themselves and leave the premises empty. And then that, of course, affects the surrounding uh, environment. So maybe municipalities should have some more effective tools to affect these situations. Are there any other questions? Sergio, perhaps you see any parallel parallels with uh, Spain? or elsewhere. Yes, thank you very much, uh, Ervins, and, and thank you very much for these uh, interesting presentations. Uh, we have learned a, a, a lot of things uh, coming from your countries and uh, from your country and uh, especially about, about Riga. Uh, I have, uh, I, 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 I mean, I, I am especially interested in this uh, problematic you have with the condominiums, with the multi-unit uh, buildings and the lack of personality. This has been uh, addressed by, at least by two speakers. Um, um, it is, it's, it's very important that the uh, people owning flats in condominiums have their own uh, organization possibilities so they can uh, uh, agree on the uh, refurbishment of the, of the common parts and take care of the whole building. This is very important. I have understood that there is a, a, a law reform in the parliament uh, going on. Uh, I think uh, one of the speakers mentioned that. I think this is a, 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 an essential thing. I mean, the, from an international perspective, international law about condominiums, um, uh, owners uh, organizing themselves in, in, in flats are, are a, a crucial way to maintain uh, not only these multi-unit buildings, but also the city and the neighborhoods and so on and so forth. So I think this is a very, a very good step forward. Also, I agree with my colleague, the, I think one of the speakers, uh, one of the first uh, a person does have to make a, a question in relation to uh, the good steps towards the collaboration uh, with the with the private sector. I think they have the knowledge, they have uh, sometimes the resources, but the public sector uh, has to keep the policies for itself. So the fact is that uh, public uh, the public administration should guide uh, towards the creation of uh, as much as uh, affordable housing as possible and can, um, I mean, encourage um, in several ways, like, for example, taxation and, and, and some others, um, the private sector to enter in, into this uh, offering of uh, affordable housing all in all. So I think this is a, a good thing. And, and, and I fear that you have a third main problem uh, about uh, the, the, uh, the maintenance of the large housing stock. I mean, I have understood for two or three speakers that it's a major uh, a major problem in your, in your country. This is this is a very difficult issue to tackle. Um, and in our report, there are some examples of uh, of uh, how this how this, this is done. For example, in energy, from the energetic in the energetic improvements improvements perspective, uh, in the Netherlands there is a scheme by which uh, you can pay the refurbishment of a whole building with uh, the discounts of the electricity bill. That, that, that comes in the, in the following year. So there's a sort of a scheme that can, 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 can help to, to improve this. But also, uh, I think that the people that are in, in the first row are the elderly, uh, and I think uh, Liga, um, uh, Professor Rasnaka uh, uh, mentioned this in the report as well. I think the elderly 
and the, and the people with disabilities are are um, should be in the in, should be prioritized somehow because um, I mean we are we are a, 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 I mean a continent that with many uh, we are growing older and older and I think this should be a a, a priority especially in old housing stock if to uh, to install uh, elevators and ramps and things like that um, which are essential for for our elderly and the disabled so. Yes, I mean I have uh, I have seen uh, many topics that are common in in some um, in, in some other countries in Europe, especially as um, Milan has mentioned at the beginning, also in Eastern European countries. But I think you are you are taking uh, nice steps forward. So uh, congratulations for all these initiatives and yeah, very good. Andres, um, Per, you, thank you. you. Well can I, can I also intervene, Milan Vtachnik, Bratislava? Can I also yeah, intervene? Yeah, sure, and then be uh, Yeah, okay. I have three small remarks. I very much admire the enthusiasm of Riga. I, I can see very enthusiastic young people dealing with new approach to housing. And I very much recommend the cooperation with Bratislava. We just recently had adopted a plan of how to solve the housing problem in Bratislava, which has very similar problems to Riga. And there are many sources, many lines of thinking where to get the housing stock for the social and affordable housing. So my recommendation to Riga, ask the people from Bratislava, exchange the plan, speak to them and, and exchange the experience. This is the first one. The second one, very important, you mentioned the bad experience with the Soviet cooperatives that we inherited. We had the same experience the corruption, the problems, and we do not want to continue with the cooperatives as the non-profit organizations dealing with housing. We are very sensitive on that in Slovakia. So I would very much admire the approach to go through the way of non-profit housing associations, which are regulated by the state, not cooperatives. We had adopt adopted a new legislation in Slovakia covering the social housing enterprise dealing with housing social housing enterprise maybe it's something similar like cooperative but the legislation is different the context is different and people can rely in different way on the new institutions which uh, which the expert was speaking about i very much advocate this housing associations approach to extend the scope of social and affordable housing and the third, my third remark is this, don't rely on banks only. Look on the example of Slovak housing fund, which was created by the state. State is giving the loans for 1% in long term and the loans are paid back. So you collect money in 10, 15, 20, 30 years. We are not living for tomorrow only. We are speaking about issues which will influence the decades. So think about this example, read the report, look on the details. It can be a solution also for Latvia to create something like that fund, starting with small amounts given, given by the state and the amounts will rise and paybacks will then create the, the positive, positive balance of the state fund. This is what we experienced in Slovakia. They have similar experience in Austria. So you can compare. It's so three remarks from my side. Thank you very much, Ervins. Thank you, Milan. Uh, uh, experience sharing and cooperation is uh, one of the major aim of our uh, publication and, and this conference. And, and I hope it helps Riga or Bratislava or all other uh, cities. Uh, per, you wanted to comment something or that's old hand? Uh, well, it's a bit, but I think I'm going going along the lines Milan just just opened. I just wanted to add one thing, um, which which uh, so the, the state has a has a has a has a real uh, role here, and we have to make or the state has to make uh, make up its mind where we want to go. I mean, like as I said, coming from a city of Berlin, Berlin has been on the market, has been up for sale in the 1990s and early 2000s. Uh, we see the effects, what was going on. The problem is. I come from a country where we have this tradition of cooperatives in the housing market. From my perspective, it works very good, but I understood by now it cannot be transferred uh, literally to, to Latvia because the traditions are differently. However, um, I think we have to uh, 
by by the regulation approach which Milan touched on um, we have we have a lot of leverage um, to to make the actors and the, the players do what we want them to I mean we're not differentiating between private actors I mean in Berlin you can see there are good private investors and there are bad private investors and we always we don't differentiate between them and the same is true for the cooperatives we need to make up from the from the from the steering point of view we make need to make up our minds what do we want actors within the housing market to deliver on and if we if we this is also something like like a european task from my perspective and this is something which milan touched on we have experiences in different regions of europe but everybody is doing their own stuff so we need to just exchange views exchange what's going on and what worked and what doesn't because i really think um i mean housing is an sdg um, this is something that the, the whole framing changes right now. We're in the middle of it and we don't, there is no blueprint. You cannot transfer Munich example to Riga, Riga example to Barcelona. It's not working. So my point would be, be more differentiated, but also take up the role as player make them do what you want them to. And this is possible. I mean, Berlin, I don't know if you've heard about that. There's something called the meet and deckle. Um, this is, I'm, Personally, I'm very skeptical, but everybody was saying it's not possible. It's basically a cap on rent uh, for five years. And everybody was saying this is not going to work. Now we have our first data and it, it works. You can still make a problem. There are, things are not, everything is not working according to plan, but things are changing. So final point, as I said, exchange, like you said, also Avins, but also make up our minds what we want the actors to do. And then it doesn't matter which actor is on the field. Thanks. Thank you. I think that was a very fine conclusion that we share experience and we do not fear new solutions that could also be used by others. I would like to remind that uh, we have created a publication of various foundations where you can see examples how these solutions or challenges are dealt with in the Netherlands, Slovakia, in the Baltics, in the UK and elsewhere. This uh, publication can be found in FEPS and uh, BFS sites and we will add it as a comment to this video. Once again, thank you all and I hope for our future cooperation and uh, we will do our best to make housing more available and affordable. Thank you all very much.